There's a particular video I wanted to watch from uh, the Japan Reporter. So he had a video. I was going to watch it in my previous stream from last week, but I never got around to it. So this is called Japan's Rise of Enjoying. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Japan's Rise of Enjoying Solitude from the Japan Reporter. And it says, uh, while the Japanese government tries hard to give us opportunities to connect with others for minimizing the problems related to loneliness, there is a growing trend to take a solitary life. To take up, I guess he means, to take up a solitary life. That sounds a little strange. <laughs> uh, but seeing the trend, more and more Japanese people are questioning, is being lonely really a bad thing? In Japanese, we use the same word, koroku, for the meaning of loneliness, solitude, or aloneness. Unlike English, we don't have words to express the different nuances. Interesting. So they just... Okay. Alright, so I have to... Re uh, he's, he, I forgot how fast he talks. So, in, so loneliness is seeing a huge social issues. Like a minister of loneliness. Alright, whoa. He, should I... Am I watching this on... No, what the hell? I feel like he's going really fast. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, serious issue, <laughs> of, especially among the elderly, interesting to note that they've actually appointed a minister of loneliness. His job is to solve loneliness in the country, and I guess the UK has one too. That's a little strange. Lonely death. Yo, that's a trip. So... Lonely people, especially elderly lonely people who are living alone, uh, they obviously they're living alone because they wouldn't be lonely otherwise. Well, I mean, you could still be lonely to live, but anyway, uh, but sometimes they could die in their apartment or in their house and remain undiscovered for many months or years. That is crazy. Seeing that more and more young people feel anxious in that situation, though, in Japan. You know, maybe a lot of this being alone stuff, look at, they're all filming themselves. So, kind of like this guy. <laughs> it seems uh, maybe it's just becoming more apparent because people could just film themselves and put it online. And also, they see other people online living a lonely life. They're like, ah, might as well. Might as well do it. It gets views. <laughs> anyway, let's see. So they're spinning it to be positive. They aspire to rethink what it means to be alone. Alright, so Pecorino. What kind of name is that? Pecorino. Um, it's interesting because, you know, Japan has a very dense population, especially in like Tokyo City kind of areas, right? So everybody's super close to each other. And, you know, it, even in this live stream, we've talked about it, but it seems like uh, almost the just the density of the crowds when you're out in public and stuff like that makes you not want to go out in public, it makes you actually want to retreat from from uh, being a part of all that really fast, busy culture. And so I think uh, the Internet is what really facilitates an in individual a solitary lifestyle, you could say, because, you know, you can kind of have people at a distance right uh, just talk to them through the internet rather than in person so anyway so these people are you know traditionally before like the internet you would think of somebody who is lonely they have a problem or like they're sad or something like that but then these people are just like nah we're just choosing to do it because we can go online <laughs> and make videos about it a minister of loneliness yeah so the well, if they're setting it up it, for you, it's it's like a public service. So some people might find it necessary. That's the way they get out. But you might not like it. I don't know. You might not need it because you enjoy your loneliness or your solitariness, really. So uh, some people might find it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after retirement. Interesting. So, you know, he sees all these benefits from not having friends. Um, what did he mention? Like, 
Well, this is one. Help help me cut down on my expenditures a lot. That's... I don't know. I guess I do notice that um, when I don't have a lot of money to spend, I stay home a lot more. <laughs> um, usually when you're with friends, they want to go out and do something, right? And that doing something usually costs money. So I can see how this makes sense. But I can also see the downside of if you don't have like a network of friends and stuff like that, when you run out of your own money, um, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to create those connections to be able to get a new job or I don't know, like what, what I wonder what he does for work. I wonder what he does for work. Goes to the grocery store. Oh, these guys. So, <laughs> so he's that kind of person where he sees like cashiers and retail service associates, retail associates. He sees them as uh, conversation partners. When he feels lonely, he's gonna. Go out. So that's why there's that kind of person that will just talk. Yeah, because. Uh, when I worked at Starbucks, like there are certain kinds of people that would just kind of talk and talk and talk. Like certain customers, they would stop you, and, <laughs> and you kind of knew they were a little bit off. But like you couldn't be rude and be like, uh, "Excuse me, I'm busy," because that's not the Starbucks way. It's not really any corporate way, right? But um, but you could tell, like, you know what? Maybe this wasn't. Th maybe this is like one of their few conversations they get in a really long time. So I was always the kind of person that would kind of indulge it, to be honest. Uh, I would let customers talk and things like that. Uh, just kind of know knowing that. But but uh, there are some customers that like, I don't know, they're, kind of, they're a little bit demanding about it. And, and it's just like, no, I don't want to talk to you. Make some real friends. <laughs> it's almost like uh, they... People like this are like, you know, I don't need friends. But then when I need someone to talk to, I'll go corner somebody who, who has to be nice to me. At a rate. That's kind of, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Oh, so he, he was married. But his wife passed away. Look, look, he is so, is he just really sad? This, so this is Nobita in Japan. He's the, he's the, the, the Japan reporter, the, this is his channel. And he likes to do some of these interviews and stuff like that. Her death left me overwhelmed with a deep loneliness. Uh, he has a dog. So he's the one who's still crying. Oh, she had... Well, at least he was able to kind of, you know, move out of his grieving process because sometimes if that goes on too long, you know, yeah, not a good end. <laughs> so he admits to being kind of a goofy guy. Wow. Huh. He said an interesting thing. He says, even if your spouse passes away, he says your marriage isn't over. I think it lasts forever in your heart. That's an interesting take. So to me, I'm still married to my wife. Interesting. He believes one day he'll be able to meet her again. Hmm. Uh, so he kind of perceives or kind of thinks about his wife feeling sad that he's alone but he says you know um i was able to find a happiness even outside uh, of our well not outside of our marriage but after your passing so you don't need to be sad about me i was able to be happy and stuff like that yeah what do you do with all that downtime try new things that's a good idea Oh, that's why he wanted to do his YouTube? 
She also enjoys being alone while living another person. And playing many new things. So this solitude made her even happier. So this solitude made her even happier. She said, I love to do alone and always busy every day. So there's no time to feel depressed. But see, that's something that's so important is, that's even what I'm finding out right now since I lost my job uh, last month or over, it's been over a month and a half. I got to find a new job. But anyway, um, if you're not actively doing things, it's easy to sink into yourself and kind of become too much in your head, you know? So it's just great that these uh, older people are able to find active things to do. And I think seems to be something that, you know, that I see is like, yeah, you know what? If I'm going to actually live a positive life and things like that, then I need to actually do things that take me out of my head and put me in the real world, you know? So this person does yoga, kazan, etc. <laughs> it also helps that you have a YouTube channel that you can... <laughs> as an outlet. I wonder if that was too fast for him to translate. <laughs> she talked about it. Oh. Oh, she was on TV for being lonely or what? I need to work on my Japanese. Oh, there's a there's another channel I watch where the girl is learning English and so she uses her her YouTube channel as a way to practice her English and talk about things and j just because I guess she doesn't have too many English people to talk to or English speaking people. But anyway, let's hear her speak English. My name is Uri Uri Bajan. Uri Uri Bajan means Uri Uri, Uri, Uri Grandma. I Uri Uri Grandma? Uri Bajan. What's Uri Uri mean? I wonder. Oh, this is under... <laughs> All the clothing was woven oh my gosh. by her own hands. Oh, that's super cool though. So <laughs> Dude, she's she's definitely an anime character. Holy crap. <laughs> that is so funny. So she that's actually pretty wild that she was able to make her own clothes. Lastly, I ask her for tips to enjoy solitude. And always have something you want to try, yeah. So, yeah, I guess her encouragement is just to stay active, stay positive. Always try something new. Always figure out some little new hobby. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, everyone had hobbies or passion when they were younger, but they quit them. They should do it again after retirement. Interesting, because you know what? <laughs> That's kind of why I'm kind of a late starter, late bloomer kind of person. Because um, I just knew that, you know, once you go to the grind, you know, of a 40-hour work week or whatever, like that's it. Your work is your work. And I remember seeing on the whiteboard when I was uh, a young middle schooler. Um, this quote that said something to the effect of find something you love to do and get someone to pay you to do it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm going to do that one day. Uh, well, you know, one day is, uh, you know, I'm what, 20, 20 something years later. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's, let's move on. Make the most of your technology, but Kodokushi, what is that? What is Kodokushi? They don't have to study too much. I don't have to check out this guy's channel just to see what he's up to. So these are older people who changed their lives by starting a YouTube channel. But what a, so young, so I wonder if he interviews anybody who's young. 
こんなに高齢化社会を見てて、自分たちの将来どうなるんだろうって不安しかない。Young is very anxious for the future. Growing old isn't that bad. She also believes solitude could benefit us in many ways. She's an artist. Singer? Yeah. Sometimes when I think about my writing, I'm like, in the past especially,、um, I would think about how much time is required to write and be alone, you know? And I would, usually I'm fine with being alone, I'm alone most of the time.、Um, but even when I thought about, man, I don't know. Whenever I start to think about it day after day after day, you know, like having to write every single day or having to do some particular thing, some task alone day after day after day, that's when it starts to like, I get psyched out, you know, and I start to be like, oh crap, I don't think I want to be alone for that long. But if I don't think about it and I just kind of live my life, then usually I can, you know, get beyond. Plus, I'm not all alone all the time. I, there's certain activities I still do. A big one is I like to go to church. <laughs>、um, in fact, I went yesterday morning. Luckily, my church had a service. But anyway,、um, so I do notice that sometimes, though, I had to make more effort to stay in, <laughs> in contact with my friends just to maintain those relationships. And it's good to have that balance. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, so she, but she's a singer and、uh, something to do with. She needs to be alone to do it. So, okay. Interesting video, I guess.、Um, oh, this is the another one I wanted to watch. Homeless. How, the, how Japan hides its homeless problem from the world. But、um, to kind of.、Uh, Wrap up that last video, I guess. What do I think about it? So, he seemed to mostly focus on older people who had like a, some kind of creative outlet, and they seemed to be very happy, very fine with being alone. So, it seems like、um, loneliness is fine when you're doing something. So, if you feel like you're lonely and you're not doing something, think about something you'd like to do and kind of begin doing it. But sometimes it's hard to even. Get to that point, I feel like, even for myself, sometimes I feel like I know what I ought to do to, I don't have a, like, to have a, a good time, I guess you could say,、um, or to do something enjoyable. But sometimes you don't always do it for some reason. And usually, you know, it's true that sometimes you can just get lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, sometimes you get lazy, or sometimes you, you're holding out hope for some other kind of thing to come along that you're not willing to tolerate some. Intermediate kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? So, for instance, like,、uh, I guess what I'm thinking of in my own personal life is、um, this past week I've been spending a lot of time like、uh, editing videos and then that from my previous live stream and putting them up and kind of looking at the feedback. And then I started to think about, wow, like, you know, if, if I want to do this kind of YouTube thing full time one day, like, What is that going to look like? Like, how many views? So I started like calculating how many views do I need to get in order to, you know, like in order to get to a,、uh, you know, a self sufficient level, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, how I'm going to get paid, you know? And then I realized that, like, I started thinking about all that. I started thinking about how mounting、uh, of, of a, you know, this dream just became bigger and bigger and bigger, like kind of overwhelming. And then it, I kind of got paralyzed. And I realized, like, that's when it kind of hit me. Like, I can't, I can't think about it like that. Like, if I think about the, Of too big of a picture, I'm gonna look at it as something far away that I don't have, and then it's unachievable. But if I kind of just, like, like I was saying earlier, just kind of let that go like a, like a balloon and then just let it go, right? Let it fly away into the air, let it, let it fly away.、Um, I can come back to just doing those little things that,、um, that, I, that I know that I enjoy. And、um, so, so that's one thing is the paralyzing thoughts. But sometimes we also have you know, addictive behaviors, you could say,、um, certain habits that we form on a,、like、a routine basis. So, for instance, I know, for instance, if I wake up lately, I find myself that if I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I check the stock market and I see, like, because I have a little bit of money in there,、uh, and I see that it's down, like, just that thing alone can put me in a bad mood.、So、I'd be like, oh, dang, like, is it going to be up again? And I, it's so dumb. Like, obviously, it goes up and down, right? But sometimes you still think, oh, today it's not going to be a good day if that's not going to go up. And I'll allow that to kind of taint or color the rest of my day. But I got to tell myself, okay, not yet. I have to do something that I know is good for me before I do with the addictive behavior, you know? So I've been personally trying to get back into、uh, 
making sure that one of the first things to do when I wake up is uh, do a little prayer time. <laughs> uh, you know, but everybody has that kind of like that time of just meditativeness and collecting yourself and focusing on just reminding yourself of what's most important to you in a day, you know, uh, or in your life, really. And sometimes you sometimes you have a hard time kind of getting back to the swing of things. So this is kind of like a like a side thing, I guess, like a to, how, how do you start to get back into doing the things you enjoy? I think um, I think at first because sometimes you, you're going to start something up and you don't feel like you're going to enjoy it right away. But you just got to be patient with yourself. You know what I mean? That's what I'm going to that's what I've been trying to do is just be patient with myself. Like even tonight, I didn't even want to stream tonight, to be honest, because I had all these fears like I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I was taking it way too seriously. I was like, you know what? Let me just let me just quit thinking too seriously and just kind of what are the first few things that I can think of to do that could be somewhat interesting. And I was like, all right, I can play Monster Hunter today for the first time in nine months. <laughs> uh, I can um, I can watch the video. I was supposed to watch my last live stream today, you know, uh, which is what we just did, you know, and um, and then just see what happens from there. So kind of just maybe just do little small things that kind of get you back into get get you back into gear and stuff. So that's kind of that's kind of what I'm kind of learning. Anyway, uh, I don't know if anybody's uh, interested in hearing what I have to say about that, but there you go. Uh, yeah, so that was definitely one thing I wanted to do in my live stream was talk about that. 